Well, 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 these are the days of our lives with the Steve Bannon-Donald Trump feud. It, things are escalating this evening. They're rushing up publication of Michael Wolff's book. He couldn't ask for better publicity than the president's lawyer sending a cease and desist letter. My goodness gracious. But folks, before we get there, we, we're doing listener requests today. We never do this. But today we've got to we got to make an exception because I have in my hands paper letter that was FedEx to me to make sure it could happen. It says, "Dear Casey, I thought we had something special. We had that connection, staying up late eating cheeseburgers, seeing how many shirts we could each fit on each other." He maxed out at four. I couldn't do it. And then things just went awry. Casey, you know you sometimes think that you have a connection that will last forever. And then it turns out it doesn't. Would you please play this for Steve? Well, Don in Washington, today's your lucky day. To Steve in Poughkeepsie. From Don in Well, 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 well. These are the days of our lives with the Steve Bannon Donald Trump feud. It, things are escalating this evening. They're rushing up publication of Michael Wolff's book. He couldn't ask for better publicity than the president's lawyer sending a cease and desist letter. My goodness gracious. But, folks, before we get there, we, we're doing listener requests today. We never do this, but today we've got to we got to make an exception because I have in my hands paper letter that was FedEx to me to make sure it could happen. It says, "Dear Casey, I thought we had something special. We had that connection, staying up late eating cheeseburgers, seeing how many shirts we could each fit on each other." He maxed out at four. I couldn't do it. And then things just went awry. Casey, you know you sometimes think that you have a connection that will last forever. And then it turns out it doesn't. Would you please play this for Steve? Well, Don in Washington, today's your lucky day. To Steve in Poughkeepsie. From Don in Washington. Blah, 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 blah. got yeah, now steve bannon is saying he's going to sue the president or at least that's a, a, one of the the lawyer fox pundits is out there saying that he's going to sue the president he has it on good authority according to to mark garagos who was i guess on the oj simpson case back in the day says he has it on good authority that steve bannon is going to sue trump for libel it's getting out of hand out there meanwhile it looks like bannon is out at breitbart uh, Matt Drudge tweeting, well, 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 these are the days of our lives with the Steve Bannon-Donald Trump feud. It, things are escalating 
this evening. They're rushing up publication of Michael Wolff's book. He couldn't ask for better publicity than the president's lawyer sending a cease and desist letter. My goodness gracious. But folks, before we get there, we, we're doing listener requests today. We never. But today we've got to we got to make an exception for you. You can listen to it again. You can savor the overtime after overtime. Now, a buddy of mine, by the way, sent me a picture from Instagram earlier today. Where is this? Yes, um, this is from Twelve Stone Church in Flowery Branch. It's something they put on Instagram. If you made any promises in overtime. With the UGA logo on it, service starts at uh, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., 1 p.m., or 5 p.m. on Sunday up in Flowery Branch. Yes, there were a lot of people making promises to God that if UGA could just get through the overtime, that they would do all sorts of things. Well, now's your time to go reconcile you're not keeping your promises with Jesus himself on Sunday at various churches. Before this game on Monday, you, you better think about that. That reminds me, Stacey Evans says that she hopes that uh, Donald Trump is an Alabama fan. <laughs> you know, honestly, I, I was going to put this off because there's so much more on the ban and drama. But, but, let me just go here. Um, I have really enjoyed this season in college football and the bowl games uh, without the whole uh, taking a knee controversy and the politics of it. And I got to tell you, one of my first thoughts was, the president coming to Atlanta for this game on Monday, my, my very first thought was, well, I can't tell you what it was because you can't repeat it on radio, but it was followed by the word traffic. Um, yeah, it's going to be miserable on Monday. And then my second thought was, oh, now everybody's going to politicize this game just because the president's coming. You, you just you can't watch a football game. Now, if George W. Bush were there or Barack Obama was there, 90% of the country, 99% of the country would just let it be. But nope, because Donald Trump is there, 50% of the country in their pink hats are going to be politicizing the game, which is unfortunate. Now, in any event, so we move back into the ban of stuff. I, it looks like he's going to be out at Breitbart. Uh, and if he is out at Breitbart, uh, that's a pretty big deal. Donald Trump Jr. had a tweet where he said that Bannon wasn't a strategist. He was an opportunist. I got to tell you, Andrew Breitbart and I were friends. We we weren't the best of friends. And I know several people who claim to be lifelong best besties with Andrew Breitbart, and they barely knew him. Uh, but I did more than once get my fair share of Andrew Breitbart calls, often at 3 o'clock in the morning, waking me up, uh, and halfway through a couple of sentences saying, oh, I forgot you were on the East Coast, and he hung up. One time he actually called me. And it was, it was like one o'clock in the morning. And as he was apologizing for waking me up, but it was important. He needed to tell me something. Uh, he got pulled over for using the, the a cell phone on the 405 out in LA and had to call me back. Uh, cause the police officer was going to write him a ticket. He called me back like a week later and picked up as if he had totally forgot to call me back. But when he called me back, picked up right where he had left off. Um, it, but Bannon came on board with Breitbart to try to give some direction, and he used Breitbart's name to build his own career before building his career with the president. And, and now they've had this falling out, and it's going to be interesting to see. He's apparently been meeting with some Chinese billionaire, according to Matt Drudge, now that the Mercers are abandoning him. But this is just so Braddock. I know that there are some of you who want to tell yourselves there's a master plan here, and there really isn't a master plan. There really isn't. Uh, it just this is this is chaos. It is the chaos of the Trump White House, and there's a lot of lack of discipline there, and a lot of that lack of discipline came from Bannon, who let this reporter Michael Wolf roam the White House with a recorder doing interviews without the communications team, and it is John Kelly who has cleared this stuff up. It is John Kelly who has turned the corner of the White House and cleaned things up now that Bannon is gone. Now, one of the things that has not been cleaned up is Jeff Sessions. Uh, who is Bannon's compatriot. The president's been wanting him gone. There are now members of Congress who want Jeff Sessions out of the White House. And today it all came to a head over marijuana. Now, this is a really big issue also coming to Georgia as Alan Peake and the state legislature and others begin to push even further for marijuana legalization of the state. Medical right now, how soon before recreational? We do have to discuss marijuana tonight on the show and what Jeff Sessions is and is not doing. 
Eric Erickson and Atlanta's Evening News. Who is that guy? I love him. The information you need and the truth you demand every night on News 95.5 and AM 750 WSB. Atlanta's Evening News is sponsored by Comcast Business. Well, yes, they're changing it up because, you know, we got the national championship game on Monday. We're going to be replaying the Rose Bowl broadcast tonight at 8.05. The phone number here, 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK. Let's go to the phones here. Adam, in Atlanta, the show's going to pot now. Hey, uh, Eric, thanks for taking my call. I just wanted to know from your talks around with people or in the industry there in Washington, who do you think or do you think there's a lot of people that are really against the recreational legalization? Because it seems like most of the consensus I hear is that most people aren't against it or they're for it. Uh, you know, interestingly enough, the, the last several years, uh, starting with Colorado, Washington State, California, um, legalizing it recreationally. Well, ignore California because it only happened a few days ago. Cal, um, Alaska, Washington State, and Colorado, a lot of the fears that people had have not panned out. Um, there are drug cartel issues that aren't getting well reported that apparently are raising some law enforcement concerns, but among actual just people showing up at work baked out of their mind and whatnot, they're not seeing those concerns. So what's happening now is in Congress, there's a big generational divide. The older members of Congress are very much against uh, marijuana legalization, and the younger members are more and more for it. Uh, and a lot of the younger members, Republicans and Democrats alike, they see a revenue source that they could tax and bring in more revenue to the federal government as well as the state governments. Now, I suspect that there are uh, the votes in the Senate to make this happen. Why? Well, because every state except Kansas, South Dakota, and I want to say Maine, um, have medical marijuana. Did you realize, because I didn't realize that until yesterday, every state of the union except three have legalized medical marijuana in one form or another. Here in Georgia, it is cannabis oil. Um, it's not actually smoking marijuana. Most states haven't actually legalized um general marijuana consumption uh, only one two three four states have legalized recreational marijuana i think um it, well washington dc as well and so there you've got enough senators and enough states it's the house of representatives not the senate that may be the problem with this i i want to spend some time on this and also when we come back uh, casino legislation might be making a comeback in the georgia legislature no i kid you not it is the syphilis of legislation every once in a while you get a flare-up of this legislation just absolutely annoying hello uh <laughs> Oh, boy. Okay. Well, it, you know what? Here's the thing. I got a couple of things I want to talk about before we get into the marijuana legalization. And the reason I say it that way is because um, it's going to take a little while to flesh out this topic and explain what's going on. And there is another topic worth talking about uh, before we get there. But I'll take phone calls on marijuana legalization as well. One thing I got to talk about. First of all, you got to hear part of the song so that you get the joke. Um uh, this is a very old song um, that was, uh, this is from the 1950s. Gather round while I sing you of Werner von Braun, a man whose allegiance is ruled by expedience. Call him a Nazi, he won't even frown. Nazi schmatzi, says Werner von Braun. Don't say that he's hypocritical. Say rather that he's apolitical. Once the rockets are up, who cares where they come down? <laughs> That's not my department, says Werner von Braun. <laughs> Some have harsh words for this man of renown. 
But some think our attitude should be one of gratitude, like the widows and cripples in old London town who owe their large pensions to Werner von Braun. <laughs> now, the reason I, I play it for you is we got the news out of North Korea. Their missile, their their nuclear intercontinental ballistic missile test, we're now learning it crash-landed in a North Korean city, town, village, whatever. It, it crash-landed amongst the people of North Korea. Here's the thing. that There's so much of a of a anti-Trump bias in the press that they will believe that the best about our enemies and the worst about our friends if they're kind to Donald Trump. And they will believe the best about North Korea now. Uh, but the fact of the matter is North Korea does not seem to have the technological wherewithal to actually get its missiles uh, into lower Earth orbit and, and go around the world as they claim. They have blown up one of their own towns or cities in North Korea with with, with this missile launch. Now, there was no warhead on it, you should know, but uh, the, the fallout from it, uh, not nuclear, but just the explosion was apparently pretty damaging. Uh, and yet, well... We're going to believe them in the media because they don't like Trump. So that's just par for the course there. Now, I do want to mention some local news here. Um, there is a story in the AJC that casino gambling appears to be coming back for more in the Georgia legislature. Yes, the, the they have lost now two years in a row, but they think now is their time. Really what they're doing is they just want to keep pushing it and pushing it and they want to fund Elections. I, I have a hard time believing there, there are two big issues this year. One is, will they get rid of the franchise fee on cell phones and instead roll it over to a tax uh, and dedicate that money to funding broadband in rural areas? It's one of the things they want to do. I suspect it won't happen this year because it's an election year. Uh, even though the, the <clears throat> Urban Rural Study Committee was unanimous in it, it, it is an election year. Do you want to have people perceive that they're getting a tax increase, particularly when they're, the, the media coverage is already suggesting they may uh, tax Netflix and iTunes and Hulu and the like? Do, do they really want to raise taxes on their voters right before an election? I don't know that they will. The other one is this casino gambling thing. There's still a lot of opposition, even though it polls well. Remember, it was just a few years ago, Republican primary voters were adamantly against it, and there is a level of corruption involved here when you consider the massive donations that are poured into the state to support it, but they won't give up on it. David Ralston is signaling maybe it won't be a bad thing. Maybe they could get it in, but he, even he doesn't really support it now. I, I have a hard time seeing these things getting through in an election year, but we've been surprised before. The other one, of course, will be what will they do with religious liberty? I don't think they should even bring it up this year. And I'll, I'll explain that to you at a later date why I don't think they should bring it up. There are other things they should do. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, maybe they will. In the meantime, we got to go to Doug Turnbull and check traffic on 285. Thank you very much. Um, so let's talk about marijuana legalization. Let me let me break down for you where I stand on the issue, uh, and I am largely indifferent on the issue of legalization of marijuana. I used to be very much opposed, but Colorado, Washington State, and the like have actually, a lot of the, the fallout scenarios haven't happened. There is one area of concern that I don't think gets a lot of coverage in Colorado, and yet I have talked to a number of people out there, including uh, I have a friend out there who has gotten into the industry of growing marijuana on his farm. And it is the drug cartels trying to cut into it. Um, there is a level of harassment and shakedown happening in Colorado uh, that doesn't often get reported among people in the marijuana industry. Um, but... I'm starting to wonder if we should just leave this to a state-level federalist concern and get the federal government out of it. What Jeff Sessions is doing is saying that we have a law in the books, that law needs to be enforced. He's going to leave it to the prosecutorial discretion of local U.S. attorneys to decide. The U.S. attorney in Colorado has come out and said he's not doing anything. Uh, they can continue on. Uh, meanwhile, drug companies that own marijuana stocks crashed today on Wall Street as Wall Street itself. Uh, the Dow Jones got above 25,000 for the very first time in history. 
Now, there's a larger issue here that we don't have time to discuss at the moment at the top of the hour I want to get into, and that is the issue of the rule of law. Here's my, my thing. If, if you want to... If you are if you want to legalize marijuana, okay. But it is against the law, and it is a federal law. And so what you should do is repeal the law, not just ignore the law. But that gets into a bigger issue about the rule of law and the breakdown of respect we have in this country for the rule of law. And I do want to spend some time on weaving those two issues together when we come back. When everything's changing around you, there's a voice that's consistent and honest. Eric Erickson. Every day, 5 till 7, News 95.5 at AM 750, WSB. My goodness, we're going to replay it tonight at 8.05. You can hear it in the lead-up to the national championship game on Monday night. Everybody's going all out. Apparently tomorrow is UGA Day. Uh, the tech grads are not pleased, I'm sure. Um Half the Alabama fans at Mercedes-Benz on Monday will be tech people, I'm sure. (laughs) Oh, my goodness gracious. The one thing to get tech grads to support anything from Alabama. Okay, now, we got to move on here. But there is a trend you should know about. You know the raw milk trend where we've got friends who do this. there's There's a farmer in town who sells raw milk. That is unpasteurized, essentially straight from the cow milk. And we've got friends who get it, and there are all sorts of People with homeopathic, strongly held views on homeopathic medicine who they get raw milk and are convinced it's it's good and enriching and uh, it's from organic cows that haven't been treated with hormones and antibiotics and whatnot. And so they give it to their kids and themselves and whatnot. I just, I go to a grocery store. Publix is my friend. But in Silicon Valley, they're taking it to a new level of absurdity. Instead of raw milk, they're going for Raw water, water, as my kids would say, my father-in-law would say, water. Um, That's what the kids think he says. So, yes, raw water. They're getting it from us for some company in Silicon Valley is convincing the Silicon Valley millionaires and billionaires to spend extra money on water that comes from a spring in Oregon that has not been treated with anything. So it's got all the bacteria and everything else in it. And, and people are raising red flags about this, saying this isn't wise. But the, the company says they, they've tested the water. They haven't tested it to the level of the FDA, mind you, but that they've tested it. So the silica, I, y'all, I believe in natural selection. I do. And, and this is the, the idiots shall not inherit the earth. They will not. It's nine after the hour. I'm Eric Erickson. This is WSB. You, as always, you can go to theresurgent.com as well. And listen, we've still got some spots available for these gubernatorial interviews. I have extended an invite uh, to Clay Tibbetts, uh, track down his folks, and hopefully get him there. If you want to come, uh, be a part of a live audience and potentially be able to ask a question to one of the gubernatorial candidates. Uh, you can text WSB to 345-345 and I'll send you back a link where you can see all, everybody we've got scheduled and um, when they are. So you can you will have to register. You can click through those links to register for the event you want to come to. We've got 30 seats uh, per event and they're filling up but text WSB to 345-345 if you want to come now we have to go back to listener dedications because I got another letter in it says dear Casey we laid there together eating cheeseburgers and I thought we had a real connection Yet now he says I never meant anything to him. I was never the influence in his life that I thought. Casey, would you play this song for me, Steve, to Don in Washington? Well, Steve and Poughkeepsie, I'm glad to make this request available for you tonight. Don in Washington, this one's for you from Steve in Poughkeepsie. Well, 
we're, we're getting a little personal there now, aren't we, with these dedications? Steve and Don, they apparently really hate each other these days. Uh, Don Trump saying Steve Bannon had nothing ever to do with him, and, well, Bannon threatening to sue. Oh, there we go. My goodness. we got to change topics, though, because... Jeff Sessions today reversed an Obama administration order on uh, marijuana legalization, where essentially the Obama administration said they were going to leave this to the states, and Jeff Sessions said, no, no, it's federal law. Federal law is going to be enforced. We'll allow prosecutorial discretion. Now, y'all, listen, I don't really care what your view is on pot for just a minute, just for this. Just listen to me here. We are supposed to be a nation of laws, not men. And unfortunately, the lawmakers we've got are increasingly insisting that instead of being a nation of laws, we are at the whim of every man possible, elected or appointed, instead of the law. So Jeff Sessions is saying he's going to reverse the Obama administration position on marijuana legalization, and local U.S. attorneys are empowered to decide whether or not they'll enforce or not. But neither the Obama administration nor the Sessions Attorney General Justice Department should do anything other than enforce the law. And federal law, whether you like it or not, criminalizes marijuana. Now, some thoughts on that, but first, let's go check with Doug Turnbull on 285. Thank you, sir. Look, the solution here isn't to ignore the law, but to repeal the law. If you do otherwise, you're going to allow individuals beyond the rule of law And you're going to put the whims of individual bureaucrats ahead of the people and the will of the people. You know, we had the situation up in Forsyth County a while back where a police officer pulled someone over for eating while driving. This has actually not just happened there. It's it's happened in other places. Uh, There was another situation where a police officer pulled over a man for eating while driving. There was no allegation that the man was driving erratically, eating his fast food, driving down the road, something millions of people do every day. But it was a young police officer intending to enforce everything on the book, and this was distracted driving. And local officials actually threw out the citation. But we live in an age where more and more complaints of overzealous police officers exist. And you got local governments nickel and diming people over all sorts of things through law. This is on the books. We're going to enforce it. Did you know in Oklahoma... It is against the law for a woman to do her own hair without a license. They could ticket you for that. In Cleveland, Ohio, it is against the law to sneeze outdoors. If a police officer wanted to in Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio, he could ticket you for sneezing outside. And you'd have to fight the citation. The correct remedy here is not to tell police officers to ignore the law. It's to repeal the stupid law. As long as the law is on the books, a bureaucrat or a politician is going to have extraordinary, capricious control over your life. So they got to repeal the laws. It allows politicians to change their mind and reverse their policies when we say, leave the law on the books, just ignore it. It puts men ahead of the law when we do this. And Congress is notorious for passing laws to claim to be tough on crime and then letting bureaucrats say, oh, we'll just give you the discretion to ignore the law. When you give bureaucrats the discretion to ignore laws like that, it changes on the whim of the bureaucrat. And the only thing more certain in this world than death and taxes is that a bureaucrat will act capriciously when the mood strikes. So listen, I don't care whether you support legalized marijuana or not. I'm rather indifferent at this point. But there are three states that do care. California, Washington, and Colorado. Well, I guess four, because you got Alaska in there as well. But regardless, as long as there's a federal law in the books making marijuana possession a criminal act, you've got a bureaucrat who can rule over California, Alaska, Colorado, Washington. You've got a bureaucrat, an unelected bureaucrat, who has more power than those states do over their own laws. The logical outcome of the federal government stepping in and making criminal law out of everything is that the federal government reigns supreme. And it's ridiculous to me that it is Republicans who run for office claiming they want to neuter Washington and make the states more powerful. And yet they're the ones typically who run and say, we're going to make a federal criminal law out of this. And, you know, you've got these situations where states can charge you with a crime and the federal government can 
charge you with the exact same crime. It is not double jeopardy because state governments and federal governments are different. So a state and the federal government can charge you for the exact same crime, and they do sometimes, particularly when a U.S. attorney wants to run for higher office later. Sally Yates, although she didn't do this. The the U.S. attorney can charge you with a crime, make a big deal out of it, even though the state is already punishing you. We see it all the time with police abuse cases and the federal government going after the police for civil rights violations. It is not double jeopardy. They can do it. Did you know when John F. Kennedy was assassinated, there was no federal law criminalizing the assassination of a president. It had to be handled by Dallas County in Texas. Congress didn't make it a federal law to prohibit the assassination of a president or a staff until 1965. And now we got a federal crime for everything you can imagine. We got federal bureaucrats with their own SWAT teams enforcing not just criminal law, but federal regulations over butter. My personal view is that Congress should scuttle most of the federal criminal law. Let the states handle it. The founders meant for the states to handle the criminal law. Let the states handle it. States are not indifferent to marijuana legalization. 47 of the 50 states have legalized marijuana in one form or another. Most medical, four or five of them recreational. Congress should put their faith in the system. Let the system work. Let the individual states decide. If Georgia doesn't want to legalize recreational marijuana, okay. And if California does, do it. By the way, we should do this with abortion as well. We should do this with gay marriage as well. Let the states decide these issues, and you don't have to live in that state. Or if you're a pothead and you want to move to Colorado, move to Colorado. I don't care. If they don't want it in Georgia. But the federal government has no business ever saying this is a law and then letting a bureaucrat say, but I'm not going to enforce it. Because then you are putting a bureaucrat in charge of you and not the law in charge of you. We should be a nation of laws, not men. And as long as we allow any bureaucrat of any party to say, I'm going to enforce this law and not that law, well, then we are letting people run roughshod over us. And to say, well, it happens, is it acceptable? We're not supposed to be a nation of men. We are supposed to be a nation of laws. So either enforce the damn law or repeal it. And might as well go on and repeal this one. News, analysis, and conviction. Atlanta's Evening News with Eric Erickson. Sponsored by Comcast Business on WSB. Oh, my. Welcome back. Phone number 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK. I actually am curious what you guys think about marijuana legalization uh, in Georgia or elsewhere. You know, as a matter of fact, I uh, had a funny conversation with a friend of mine the other day who uh, was a caller to this program for a long time before confessing. Uh, that he would call and get very upset when the topic of marijuana came up and typically was actually in his backyard smoking it <laughs> before calling in. Um, I, I am, I'm actually stunned by the number of people I know who uh, have admitted over the years that, that they partake. I, I just, wow. Um, and again, you know, I, I think there is a legitimate issue to be concerned with on the rule of law. If you... If you decide to ignore the law because you don't like the law, uh, you're putting your views ahead of the views of um, of, of national public policy, and, and you may be okay with that. But I think, call me old-fashioned, but if there's a law in the books, um, then the law should be enforced, and if we're not going to enforce it, we should get rid of it. And there are a lot of laws we should get rid of, and I am strongly, strongly, strongly of the opinion that there is a lot of federal criminal law including a lot of drug policy, that should be left to the states. Um, I have issues with marijuana legalization. One of them is not the federal law. Um, there are there are other issues, um, not necessarily relevant for this conversation, that, that give me concern. But, I mean, we are letting federal bureaucrats who are not elected run roughshod over the states who are semi-sovereign entities who should possess most of the power, ceding only a limited amount of it to the federal government. And we allow the federal government to do things like this. We are allowing the federal government to have more power than the founders have ever intended it to have or any amendment to the Constitution has ever given it. And that's the bottom line. It's me. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> okay. It was a surprise. Welcome back. It's Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk. And I am happy to let you chime in here 
Um, should the Georgia legislature further loosen marijuana laws in the state? Um, question for the crowd tonight. If you want to call in 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK. In other news, there is good news. There is some good news out there today. Job growth. 250,000 new jobs were added in December when most projections were that it would be 190,000 new jobs. So many, many more. The Dow Jones today closed above 25,000 for the first time today. That is a good deal. But, you know, here's the thing uh, about the Dow Jones is there is numerous, numerous polling out there Many, many surveys and a great deal of research that shows that voters in this country do not connect growth in the Dow Jones to feelings about the economy. Now, you can you can be one of the people who disagrees with that. You know, this is one of the problems uh, with a lot of this stuff is I say this to you that there have been multiple studies from multiple respected entities and it shows that. Um, people do not connect growth in the stock market or in the Dow Jones, at least to their personal well-being. And then someone calls it, well, that's not true because I do. I don't care about you. I'm not talking about the individual. I'm I'm talking about the majority of society does not just because you're in the minority doesn't mean you got to call and yell at me about it, but it's true. A majority of people out there don't connect growth in the Dow Jones to, uh, personal well-being, improvement of personal well-being. So, Touting the Dow Jones getting above 25,000 doesn't do a lot for a lot of people. In fact, a great many people, not a majority, but a plurality, are always worried when it keeps hitting these records that it's going to crash and that's going to hurt them. What does connect with people, though, is job growth. And 250,000 jobs and a 4% unemployment rate after years of feeling like we were never getting out of the recession um, is actually, well, that connects with people. That makes people feel good. That makes people suggest it's not just themselves that are doing well, but their neighbor as well. And most people care about their neighbors and want to make sure their neighbors are doing okay. And they don't feel like the economy is recovering if they're doing okay, but everybody around them isn't. Well, this makes them feel like they are. Not a bad way to look at things. And this might actually help the press if he would just stay off Twitter. People could actually focus on the good news instead of on his crazy tweets. Now, to the phones we go, are you in favor of legalization of marijuana in Georgia or an expansion of medical marijuana? 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk. Eric Decatur, you're up. Welcome. Mr. Erickson, how are you? Good. How are you? Very good, sir. It's wonderful to speak to you. Thank you. You too. So I would be completely and totally against it because look at where we are as a nation. We have lost our ever-loving minds. Um, I think that if we smoked it, we would just smoke it just kind of willy-nilly with our kids in the car, and we would smoke it while we're driving. And Well, it, you know, so Eric, let me stop you there. It's funny you say that. A buddy of mine is listening to the show, and he texts me, and he says, you know, um, one of the things that doesn't get mentioned is insurance costs. If you look at historic data, uh, right. health care costs skyrocketed after prohibition was repealed. With recreational legalization, health care incre- care insurance costs are going to go up from the side effects of smoking. And uh, people who say it doesn't give you cancer, well, uh, you smoke it at high enough temperature, you're going to get carcinogens in your body, science says. So, yeah, I mean, there are definitely going to be some increased societal costs to this. Um, really will be societal costs. And by the way, the, the whole idea that it's not addictive, I hear this a lot of times we get people who call in who they don't want to stop taking marijuana themselves, but they will absolutely adamantly tell you that marijuana is not addictive. Y'all, tobacco wasn't addictive either. Tobacco was bred over time to become addictive. Um, you, you legalize marijuana. In fact, uh, there's a lot of evidence that it's already started. Breeders growing more and more potent, more addictive strains um, to keep people a, under a level of addiction. Question is, are you breeding the kinds of marijuana that just make people sleepy on the couch or the ones that make them really euphoric, crazy, whatnot? Um, those strains do exist. Craig and Marietta, you're next. Welcome. Yes, sir. How are you today? Good. How are you? So my comment that I have is that that the legalization of marijuana is going to create a whole class of people that are unemployable. 
You probably so. You know, that is one of the side effects that's happening in Colorado is they have a nursing shortage because they can't find any nurses who pass the drug screening program. Exactly. And uh, the majority of the jobs out there don't, do not tolerate drug use because of the side effects of uh, reduced reaction times, of course. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's a big manufacturer out in Colorado that has packed up and moved to South Carolina because he couldn't get anybody uh, at work who, because of insurance liability reasons, he couldn't have people who failed drug tests. And a bunch of employees started failing drug tests because of recreational marijuana, and he had to abandon Colorado and move to South Carolina. Well, and if they legalize marijuana, who are they legalizing it for? Yeah. What group of people need it other than medical marijuana? Yeah, no one um, no one really needs it, but there are a whole lot of college kids out there who certainly like to smoke it. Craig, i got to let you go there because we got to check with Doug Turnbull, who is checking 285. Thank you. By the way, i got a confession here. Uh, speaking of smoking stuff, I smell like a smoker, not like a tobacco or a weed smoker. I have had a turkey on the... <laughs> Yep, J- Jared is very upset about this. Yes, I, I I have had a turkey smoking all afternoon on the big green egg, and it is time for it to come off. And I went out and checked on it during break, and I uh, I smell like I, I smell like pecan wood right now. And after it's off, I'm going to put a Boston butt on to smoke overnight, Jared. <laughs> yeah, yes, I am. I'm totally going to bring it up there sometime later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the phones. Megan, welcome. How are you? Hi, Eric. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. I I do agree that it should be legalized if it's going to be handled on a state level, not a federal level, and if it's taxable. Oh, you know, it, I, I'm so glad you raised that issue because, you know, California legalized it on the 1st. And you know who's right. really, really upset about it? Potheads. Right. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not making this up because California is now going to regulate it. So the cost is going up. Um, the regulatory cost is going up. In California, up until January 1st, uh, medical marijuana uh, was allowable. Recreational wasn't. And, and I know people who went into doctor's offices and said I had asthma and, and got themselves a medical marijuana card. And they could have it delivered at 3 o'clock in the morning if they wanted. And right. California is now prohibiting delivery of marijuana sales after 10 p.m. Yeah, and I know a lot of people think if it's legalized, there's a bunch of people that's going to go out and smoke uh, marijuana, but that's not true. It's not going to be easily accessible to everyone, and it's going to be more expensive. It is definitely going to be more expensive, and and a lot of the college kids in Colorado even who supported right. uh, legalization are now very upset about legalization. And you'll be putting a lot of drug dealers out of business. Yeah, so I, you I'm will. I'm seeing a plus to this. There you go. Megan, thanks very much for the phone call. 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK. The, the question are the trade-offs. And, you know, it, I said on this program when Colorado legalized it several years ago that we should wait for several years and see what happens in Colorado. There are definitely concerns. And, and there are, I cannot overstate enough, the people I have talked to in Colorado say that there are serious uh, cartel and corruption concerns that haven't been covered adequately in the media of uh, small uh, farmers, small marijuana farmers getting run out of the business, uh, disappearing or being forced against their will to be brought into larger companies uh, to expand production. Uh, and it, there have been an increase in mob-related activities in Colorado and the like. And that's a concern. Now, the trade-off there is you expand it nationwide instead of putting it in a small pool area. And perhaps, perhaps, perhaps it goes away. Uh, there are other concerns as well. You, you know, you know my, my, my kooky, fringy concern here with it? The number of pastors I have talked to, a large number, because I was approached by this by actually by a listener a couple of years ago uh, and have talked to bring it up a lot to pastors and, and theologians around the country. And there does seem to be a connection between an increase in pot consumption and an increase in atheism among former believers. I, I I don't know that there's any research in it, but just anecdotally, there are a lot of pastors who have this concern uh, that they have seen people in their church fall away uh, once they took up smoking weed. And I just, there are societal costs here that I don't know that we fully have explored. They may be there, but you know what? Colorado thus far, they're losing some heavy manufacturing jobs and they've got a nursing crisis. Uh, but then at the same time, they also have a new source of revenue for their state uh, for social welfare services. And the cost has gone up, and suddenly you've got a bunch of college kids paying taxes to buy their weed. 
Atlanta's Evening News with Eric Erickson. Breaking local news. Kirk Mellish's accurate and dependable five-day forecast. And triple team traffic every six minutes. WSB. All righty. Let's see. I want to go back to the phones. Uh, let's go first. Uh, Jared and Buford, you're up next. Welcome. Hey, Eric. Hey there. Uh, hey, long time listener, big fan. Thank you. Um, hey, I wanted to uh, uh, respond to a caller earlier. Um, he uh, he was talking about um, if legalization passed, or actually, you know, marijuana was legal, that uh, we would be running around smoking it willy nilly, possibly people driving doing it. I kind of feel like we have the same problem with alcohol, which people don't like to admit the drug. And I kind of think that um, the people that are riding around smoking pot in their cars are probably already doing it. Yeah, I got to tell you, I have passed two people in the past week who were a uh, high school kid in the line at McDonald's. And he, I mean, it was like fog coming out of his car that everybody could right. smell. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I, but the question though, is how many more people would do it if it was legalized? Let me go real quick or, or Robert, we don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to get you in his last caller. Robert. Hello. Hi there. You're next. Hey, Eric. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Got to make it quick though. Okay. Yeah. I'm against it. Um, uh, just from personal experience. All right. Um, uh, seeing what it did, uh, friends, wives, and so forth in the past. People, we used to have a term that when I was in high school, we called people potheads if they got into it really heavy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I use that phrase a, a lot. Um, and, yeah, yeah. There, listen, for uh, there are a whole lot of people who say it's not addictive who don't seem to want to cut it out, and a lot of those people – uh, who never progressed in life, uh, and they say, well, look at all the people in Hollywood. Who, yeah, and a lot of the people in Hollywood weren't smoking it regularly until after they got to... Man, I, I tell you, the, the amount of drug use in that place, it just continues to astound me. Um, in any event, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon in Georgia. But uh, again, this is one of those issues where there are so many people in Congress who feel strongly that this should be a state issue. Well, put up or shut up. Uh, repeal the federal law if you feel that strongly. Otherwise,